Hey, have you always wanted to turn your love for music into a career? Sick of normal life and people saying you need money when you just need Eddie Van Halen pumping through your veins? Welcome to the Whimsical Tone Facility, where we turn your hobby into a jobby. Was that really the line? Our WTF alumni have worked with some of the best in the business, from Justice Beaver to Kanye East to Willie Eyelash. If you're ready to turn your love for the shred into crying in bed, call us today at 1-800-WTF-IS-UP-TODAY. I want to start off with my likely not legally binding intro phrase of this is my personal opinion. I will also present some facts and talk through my experience and from the experience I've heard of others. And I'm not calling any school specifically a scam. But I do have an issue when you have an institution that has money as the first priority over the students and the care for the students. And you have that situation, things just happen. Before we get into this, I want to make sure that you are subscribed and you turn on the bell so you don't miss any of these juicy hot goss videos or the podcasts that I put up every single Monday. And also let me know in the comments below, do you think that for-profit music schools are a scam? Why or why not? Let me know. A quick disclaimer, I did attend Musicians Institute from 2013 to 2014. I did their audio engineering program and a couple quarters of the drums, but I will say that this does not alter my opinion or filter anything that I want to say in this video. The answer, are they scams? It depends. It's a more complex question than just a yes or no. And what I wanna do is start with some of the negative stuff that I've seen, experienced, and heard about and observed, and then talk about some of the positive aspects of for-profit music schools. Let's jump into it. A for-profit school is a higher educational institution operated by private profit-seeking businesses. And there's nothing wrong with seeking profit because I love money, I'm sure you love money too, but for me the issue is when you have the aggressive desire to continue to increase profit and make more money, against the caring and well-being of a student body. And I would imagine a lot of the quarterly review meetings go something like this. Hey, so how are the numbers this quarter, Jimbo? Well, they're actually looking really good. Our graduation rate is up by 20% and campus happiness overall is up by 40%. So it's looking to be a great year. But how's the money though? I mean, we're a little under, but... A little under? That's almost as unacceptable as this poorly written skit. I'm so sorry, sir. I mean, we're, we're taking care of our students, though. And I mean, you know, Johnny's not the best writer, but he's really trying. This is unacceptable. What is the one thing that I want? A bed made of only high-end beanie babies, sir. That's right. And this happiness crap isn't helping that. Get on it. <sighs> yes, sir. Uh, should we end this skit now? I mean, I don't see why it would keep going. I mean, the writing was subpar at best, and I'm sure people are tuning out at this point. Yeah, Honestly, at this really point, you know, just, just getting really self-aware and heady. I don't what think do that anybody's think? listening, and I, I really know, just you tell me, dude. Gonna... As hilarious as that bit was, and I mean, it was pretty hilarious, these institutions will go to some massive lengths to get people on board, and that leads to some very aggressive marketing tactics. Zara Crowley was a recruiter at the for-profit Westwood College in 2007. Crowley says she quit because she couldn't continue preying on low-income youth and using something called pain points. Pain point would be something, they work at McDonald's, they don't want to be like their parents. We'd turn it on them and say, I thought you wanted to do something with your life. Do you want to work at McDonald's for the rest of your life? And while that's not technically illegal, it definitely doesn't leave a good taste in my mouth and a lot of people's mouths with the way that things can be advertised. I'm not gonna show specific ads because of course that would kind of be more direct and possibly legally damning, but I think that a lot of them can be a bit of an overpromise because you see tons of flashy footage of them working with tons of high-end gear, playing on big stages, all this passion near profession stuff, and flexing about all the celebrities that some of their alumni have worked with. But again, this isn't illegal or objectively wrong, but it paints a picture that attending this specific school can lead you to this specific outcome, and that just overwhelmingly tends to not be the case. Brand Val you. Oh, okay, oh yeah, 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 my bad. Here we go, here we go. So when it comes to brand value between not-for-profit and for-profit schools, the big thing comes from the acceptance rates. In a for-profit environment, you're looking at essentially everybody getting in, which isn't bad. It's good that if you want to be able to go there, you can. But what that tends to do is water down the perceived value and prestige of having a background at that school. So in the case of a not-for-profit, uh, you might have gone to a more prestigious school. People are going to think you're smart, which is, here's a picture of a brain. It's a brain. <laughs> Isn't that, that's a brain. You get lots of money. Respect from your girlfriend's parents. 
Now these are all really good things that come from going to a not-for-profit school. So now let's see how that looks going to a for-profit school. So for-profit schools, you're gonna notice it's devoid of a brain. You did too much cocaine on the weekdays, this is your brain after you're done at a for-profit school. Actually, you know what, we're gonna give you a little credit. You studied on Sundays. There you go, that's what you get. Uh, as far as money, uh, that's not really gonna be a thing, but what you will have is the ability to shred on the guitar. So, gonna just drop a little, little guitar here and a bunch of dudes in ponytails who are very, very happy with you. That's what you can get. And then looking at this, what are the odds that they're actually gonna respect your decision to major in the trombone? It's none. So instead what you get is they recommend other men for your girl to date. So you have to be prepared for this because they're gonna do it probably every single holiday and gathering. So you have to be prepared to show them how you actually just hit 46 subscribers on your YouTube channel and how everybody loves your shred. In a phone interview about Holden Thorpe's book with the title too long for me to remember, he confirms the fact that the data on the job prospects and earnings pretty much show that a for-profit degree doesn't give you an advantage. And in his book states that a graduation rate for a for-profit school is about 23%, while private and public nonprofit schools have over doubled that graduation rate. So unfortunately, the numbers just don't add up to the feeling that they advertise. My last and probably most important point is debt. These schools, are so expensive. And they're not something to take lightly. And I think for me, that's why I get so irked about for-profit music schools at times. Everything I've mentioned up to this point can really make a young, impressionable, or naive mind think that this music school is going to give them the stepping stones and the direct path to a set, steady career in music. And that sense of security can make people feel more comfortable with the overwhelming price tag and much more susceptible to be taking out loans that they may not understand the ramifications of later. You're likely to be ending up with a diploma that isn't going to land you a steady job. You'll be in a freelance market that is incredibly vicious and takes years to build a reputation. And within all of that, the student loan payments start knocking. And myself and everybody else can tell you that extra high overhead can be absolutely suffocating when you're trying to start your career. And it can put you in a position where you have to take on tons of hours at a day job that doesn't end up going into music just to stay afloat. And there's no problem with having a day job and I would actually encourage it because having the financial security, especially when starting out is super important. But if you have a ton of student loans that you have to pay down, every monthly payment is a set amount of hours every single month you have to spend away from music just to break even. And that's my beef. So if you have to go into debt to attend one of these schools, I just want you to be super, super careful about it. Please do not take this decision lightly because you're starting out as a student, you know, who there's so many possibilities. You have a smile, you still have both your ears, and you even have short hair as of now, and you have no idea what's in store for you. Because you know what, here it comes. Here it comes, wait, th this is an asteroid. Here it is, that's student debt, your girlfriend's parents. But there's your one friend in the ponytail who loves what you do. And that's what you have to look forward to afterwards. So goodbye. Look at that jaded frown. You've lost part of your ear. Too much cocaine on the weekdays. I told you, dude, knock it off. That hair, you can't even afford scissors anymore. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. Uh, okay, so that was a lot of negative, but now I wanna flip it and talk about the positive aspects of for-profit music schools and when they can be worth the cost of entry. More than anything, this portion is probably more my personal experience, but I think it's a great example of what can be done with these schools and if you take advantage of all the resources they have available. By far, the most positive reviews I see in these schools and in my personal experience comes from the network. Moving to a new city or even staying in your current one and going out there on your own, meeting tons of people, chatting them up, connecting, building that network on your own is a daunting feat and I don't think most people can pull that off on their own. I know 19 year old John did not have the social skills, communication or emotional intelligence to be able to go out to his shows, chat people up and start building relationships from scratch. If anything, most of my interactions on my own at events went something like this. Okay, they just played their set, it's time to talk. Shit, what do I say? Uh, oh yeah, okay, I like their music. Uh, I mean, he plays guitar. I can talk about the tones he used. Yeah, okay, you got this, you got this. Talk about the tones. Hey man, uh, you got really nice toes. 
So the school environment was the best way for me to jump in and start my network off quickly. Not to mention the overwhelming majority of my first paying clients came from students or people I met through MI. Mind you, these weren't great paying clients, but this was my first exposure to running my business on my own, navigating the entire premise of working with somebody outside of school, and it gave me a great baseline foundation of people to work with. And again, this is super doable on your own, but I think it's a ton of social pressure to go out and execute on your own. And I know the vast majority of people could not do that on their own. And I know for me, I definitely could not. And I think the way that people perceive in areas such as Los Angeles, as well as the you're gonna have a career if you go here, marketing tactics ends up creating a vicious circle with a lot of fake perceptions and realities. These people come down to a school, they expect tons of fame, glamor, notoriety, Instagram followings, and it just doesn't work out like that. Honestly, a for-profit music school boils down to how much work you're gonna wanna put into it because that's exactly how much you're gonna get out. I can definitely say that the person who showed up to my classes hungover on cocaine on a Wednesday morning is definitely not the person who's succeeding in the music business today. The next important part has to do with opportunities that are available through the school as opposed to doing it all on your own. Between the teachers that are actively working in the industry, all the workshops and entire departments that these schools have dedicated to helping position you for opportunities or connecting you to opportunities, there are a ton of resources out there and I'm honestly surprised that I don't see more students taking advantage of these. Through these resources, I've worked with many of the teachers as well as got my first touring opportunity, which ended up leading me to this show. So in my experience, the opportunities are abundant that the schools are able to bring to you, but it's up to you to be able to execute and work hard to stand out with it. And I'm just so underwhelmed with how few people really took the time and effort and energy to go above and beyond with all the resources that I saw given at Musicians Institute. Looking inward at the school, the teachers, in my experience, have overall been fantastic. There may be more of a corporate mindset at the top, but the teachers themselves are incredibly passionate about their students and really want them to thrive, succeed, and learn and grow. So I can't go through all of this without saying a massive thank you to all the teachers that have contributed to my growth in knowledge, career, and myself as a person, so thank you. Lastly, a school provides structure and curriculum to educate you. They're a school. That's what they do. And as much as we think that we're all hard workers on our own, the amount of people that would be able to sit down, create an entire year, two year, four year curriculum with proper pacing, feedback loops to be able to make sure that they're on track, knowing which things to focus on, what not to focus on, setting the momentum for it all. It's just not really a feasible thing for somebody to take on on their own. The structure and progression built into these programs is massively beneficial. And I think at the end of the day, the vast majority of people are gonna learn much faster with this structured program instead of going on their own. So ultimately, are music schools scams? No, I mean, that title was fairly clickbaity and if you made it this far, it worked. But I do think the fact that money is number one over the student inherently does create a different dynamic and can lead to some of the faults that I talked about in this video. The flip side of that being that there are a ton of opportunities available through these schools and if you're ready to take advantage of it and make the most of every single dollar going into it, you can absolutely make a career out of it and absolutely get tons of amazing opportunity. So I think it's important to be practical and objective when looking at the decision of whether or not a music school is right for you. I was actually thinking about making a video on my favorite alternates to a formal music college education. And if you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. So at this point, I'm supposed to come up with an outro. It's about 20 seconds for an end card because I think the important part about the end card is it's gonna direct you to other videos. And I really do wanna keep you on the channel as long as possible. But the problem is right now, I don't know how long I've been talking and I'm sure Steven's gonna cut me off at the 20 second mark. But that's totally okay. I'm just gonna keep talking, fill up this space. Have you really been watching all the way to the end? Like that's kind of